What I'd like to have right now is for all you fat, out of shape, Minnesota meatheads. The best body in the business. When you hear that sentence, Rick Rude is always one of the names that comes up. But what if I told you that he started out skinny without his famous mustache, was off performance enhancing drugs for a while, and even had higher body fat at some point in his career. Since I've already covered Rick Root's training routine and arm wrestling career in another video, this time I want to cover his insane transformation of his 12 year long wrestling career within 6 minutes, as well as his ups and downs and how those incidents affected his physique to give you guys some context together with it. Root, known for one of the best physiques in pro wrestling, faced plenty of challenges. From getting started in the business, joining the WWF and winning some gold from the Ultimate Warrior, his departure and career peak in the WCW, a career-ending injury and his tragic end. Attending Robbinsdale, Minnesota High School, where other future legends like Kurt Henning, Nikita Kolov, and John, the Barbarian Nord, shared the same class and locker rooms. As far as his arm wrestling career goes, there isn't much material out, except for some placements in some tournaments in the early 1980s. After working as a bouncer at Grandma B's, where he also became close friends with the Road Warriors and other future wrestlers, he received training by Eddie Sharkey. Out of all that gang that you worked at Grandma B's with, who would you say was the toughest? Probably Rick Rude was probably the toughest out of our bunch. When I came across some older pictures, he's barely recognizable without his famous moustache. Also, still way skinnier than the future him. My guess is that until around 84 or 85, his physique still looks relatively natural to me. Once he joined the CWF and was put together with Percy Pringle, future Paul Bearer, his appearance started to change, and not just in terms of facial hair. He tagged a few matches with Manny Fernandez and Lex Luger, another specimen, and didn't look that much smaller compared to him, and feuded eventually with Dingo Warrior, who he would encounter a few years later again in the WWF. Talking about the WWF, things seemed to really pick up from there. Having the legendary Bobby the Brain Heenan in his corner, his biggest feuds included Hall of Famers like Roddy Piper, Jake the Snake Roberts and the former Dingo Warrior, now known as the Ultimate Warrior, where he eventually won the Intercontinental Championship from and held it for almost half a year. His WWF days pretty much marked his peak physique and with his low body fat he really stood out among the other more bulky wrestlers from that time period. Now here's a little interesting part I came across. Since he wanted to have a child during the time, it forced Root to go off the gas. And let's just say certain substances don't really help in making children. So there's a period where he looks much smaller. Even the commentators mentioning it. While he still looks pretty good for being out of shape, probably better than most people, Vince McMahon saw it otherwise and wasn't happy with his appearance of the ravishing one as Rue told during the United States vs. McMahon trials. Soon after Survivor Series, he left the company and had pretty much his last active match there. After spending some time in the independent scene and in smaller promotions, where he even had a feud with the Honky Tonk Man, he ended up for a few matches in All Japan Pro Wrestling, where he sent Kikuchi to the Shadow Realms. During that time, he also gained a lot of extra body weight and fat, and looked a lot bulkier than ever before, and not just from the extra body hair. Once he joined the WCW, he shredded off the extra weight, his career pretty much reached its climax, feuding with Flair, Steamboat and Sting, and having his best and most legendary matches, winning the WCW International World Heavyweight Championship or beating up badly jobbers like Mark Starr. Seriously, if you haven't watched the Mark Starr match, give it a go 
and see how freaking brutal Rick Root can be. He's had a vicious streak, a vicious nature. Ooh, oh, even more. Talking about Sting, his last match in Japan pretty much ended his career after hitting his back at the stairs. After his in-ring retirement, he joined later the WWF as one of the founding members of the DX. And after the Montreal screw job, left the WWF and made his famous double appearance at the rival show and joining the NWO. There, he didn't have much to do besides managing one of his best friends, Kurt Henning. Rumors are that he was working on a comeback but tragically passed away in 1999 from heart failure, which came from an overdose of mixed medications. His last TV appearance, he looked fairly unwell and bloated. Makes me really wonder why nobody mentioned something or saw it coming. Even today, Root is still remembered as one of the best physiques who sold atomic props like no one else and left his mark on the industry with his introductions and airbrush pants. In case you're interested in learning more about Root, feel free to check out the video I made about his training. Thanks for watching guys.